I'm now going to introduce um, the first award of the day. So just to sort of give you a very quick background to the um, Labs Awards, uh, we, we launched the Labs Awards, I think, in 2015, and they were a way of recognising work that had already been done with our digital collections. And secondly, it was a cunning way to find out what people were actually doing with our collections. So it kind of um, f uh, sort of served two purposes. And over the years, um, the, the categories have evolved, and um, the first category um, that, that has been a constant, really, from 2015 is the Research Award. And I'm going to get my colleague, James Perkins, who's the Research and Postgraduate Development Manager British, at the British Library, who's going to uh, talk about some of the entries and also, excitingly, talk about the runner-up and the winner of James. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Mahendra. Hello, everyone. Um, as Mahendra said, I'm James Perkins from the um, British Library's Research Development Team. And a uh, great pleasure to be here to present the, uh, the first round of awards, the Research Awards. And as Mahendra said, these recognise um, outstanding and innovative work that's been done, that's been carried out using British Library's digital collections and data, and which has had some kind of impact on research. Uh, this year, we are highlighting eight entries. Um, and what I think is great about, about all these entries is that they highlight the sort of variety of digital scholarship that can be achieved using British Library collections and data, but also um, the, the variety of those collections and data sets as well. Um, so here we go. Um, I have uh, little summaries of each of these, um, each of these projects. So I'm, I'm literally just going to read them out to you. Um, first up, automatic uh, detection and identification of people in British Library news archive videos by the Visual Geometry Group from the University of Oxford. And they carried out automatic face tagging of 106 news videos using deep learning technology. Uh, this enables an enhanced person search and retrieval, such as show me all the times with, when Boris Johnson and Jeremy Corbyn have appeared in the same scene together, or show me whether uh, a prime minister has been interviewed uh, by Jeremy Paxman, or count the number of times Barack Obama appeared each year, etc. So, fantastic project. That's the first one. Next project, we have automatic font group recognition for optical character recognition. This is by the uh, font group recognition team who have developed open source uh, system that can recognize the, the main font of early printed books with the help of deep artificial neural networks. Uh, the tool has the potential to process huge amounts of data in a very short period of time. And it provides scholars with the opportunity to gather statistical data which could be used to answer long-standing research questions about uh, the design of genres, uh, the regional preferences of fonts, the developments of fonts over time. Um, really good starting point as well for future work on opt optical character recognition um, for non-Latin fonts, which is an area of work of great interest to the library. Um, so fonts such as uh, Cyrillic or Arabic or Chinese and so on. Um, and the British Library um, allowed the team involved in this project to use images from a very large collection of incunabula or um, books printed before 1501 here at the library. So another fantastic project. We next come to the third project, which is the Corpus Calendarium by um, Aaron Max. So this is a relational database of calendars from Books of Hours um, and an interactive website based on that database. And uh, the website allows browsing by manuscript descriptions, such as place or creation, <coughs> liturgical use, or current um, holding condition, saint or date. Um, for example, you could identify every manuscript with St. Wollstone on January the 19th, or you could see variant spellings of a single name. And there are 26 manuscripts from the British Library in this database, of which 22 were entered based on the digitised images available online. Next, we have F Tempo, uh, or uh, Full Text Search of Early Music Prints Online. This is by Tim Crawford at um, Goldsmiths. Um, and it's a publicly accessible online resource linked to a remote database of a large collection of early printed music, um, which is based on the British Library's um, early music online collection. And this allows a user to search within a few seconds um, 60,000 pages for similar music content based upon a page image, optionally uh, captured using a mobile phone, 
which has been uploaded to the system. So uh, basically, F-Tempo offers for the first time flexible, content-based, full-text searching of a large and growing collection of digital images of Renaissance and early Baroque uh, music distributed amongst the world's uh, music libraries. Moving on. Uh, next project is the Global Digitization Dataset Project, um, prototype project for a, a future global digitization dataset which can, uh, combines metadata records of digitized text from the British Library, the Hathi Trust, and the National Library of Scotland and the National Library of Wales, um, created to support discovery of digitized materials, um, and also as the creation of novel cross-collection data sets for digital scholarship, and to support libraries in their digitization selection activities. Uh, working closely with British Library Metadata staff, over half a million records for items um, digitised by Microsoft and Google were extracted, and then these were merged with another 17 million records from Hathi Trust, National Library of Scotland and National Library of Wales, and this is clearly going to be a really, really important resource for labs around the world going forward. We then have another uh, project, uh, as I said, the diversity of, of projects underway and the diversity of collections at the library never ceases to um, amaze me. But so the next project is um, titled John Fawcett Savile and Theatres of the East Midlands Circuit, 1843 to 1855, by Leslie Phillips. And this is a volume containing a detailed account of the plays and players working on the East Midlands uh, theatre circuit in those years, with notes and uh, on the background of, of the manager, John Fawcett Savile. Next, we have the uh, Marie Duval Archive Project. This is by uh, Simon Grenin, Roger Sabin, and Julian Waite. Uh, a new open access online visual database of the known drawings of Victorian cartoonist and actress uh, Marie Duval. Um, the Marie Duval Archive Project brings together Duval's work from a number of public and private sources. Uh, it provides a new resource for historic and stylistic analysis of, of Duval's work and environment and the wide public academic dissemination of insects deriving from the archive, uh, including a public-facing book, an academic book, an exhibition touring Lon to London, Berlin and New York, uh, academic papers and seminars and a public lecture tour. All of that. Uh, then we have uh, another project, uh, Web Archives and the Geographies of the Digital Economy in the UK. This is by Emmanuel Tranos, and it sheds light on the evolution of digital economy in the UK at a very granular level in terms of space, time, and context. And it, used, it utilized something called the GIST UK Web Domain Dataset, which is a subset of the Internet Archive that is uh, curated by the British Library and includes um, all the archived web pages under the .uk um, top level domain. Right, so this is um, where we could do with drum rolls, but I'm about to um, start announcing the, uh, the runner-up and, and the winner. So here we go. Uh, the runner-up of the 2019 BL Labs Research Award is Automatic Detection and Identification of People in British Library ar uh, Archive Videos. So, uh... <laughs> and just to say what the, what the team really liked about this project was how it shows so much promise for how we can aug augment discovery of our video archive. So a really, really fantastic project and congratulations to, to everybody involved. And I think I will now Ask them to come up and uh, tell you a little bit about the project. Right, thank you very much to the British Library Labs. I'm Andrew Brown and this is Ernesto Cotto and we'll be giving an overview of the project here. So our work was on a subset of the British Library's television and radio news archive and you can see some samples here. This is a very important archive for historians and researchers and the general public. However, access is very limited. Partly due to its size, there are over 90,000 videos, but also because of the lack of any annotations for these videos. We would like to open up the archive to researchers and historians and pose questions such as, when did Jeremy Corbyn first appear on Newsnight? Or find all the times that Shirley Williams and Hugh Grant appeared together. So our solution is to use facial recognition to automatically 
detect and identify people, and then we can automatically answer these questions. So our method has two main steps. The first is we need to find the people to tag in the videos. And we do this by automatically detecting and tracking all of the faces in the videos into individual face tracks. And you can see two of these face tracks here. The second step is we need to assign a person annotation to each of these face tracks. And we have two methods for doing this. The first method is that we label these face tracks using a bank of known people with their names and we know what they look like. The second method is that we use text that we detected in the scene that has names in it to help identify the face tracks as well. So I'll now give an overview of both of these methods. For the first method, we simply take each of the individual face tracks, we see if there's a match between the face track and one of the faces in our known face bank, and if there is, then we label the face track accordingly. For the second method, we use this idea that sometimes text in the scene gives an indication as to who is in the scene, such as in this case, uh, the text says that David Grossman is this political correspondent. So what we do is we automatically detect and read the text and automatically identify the names. We then search for these names on image search engines and download the first ranked images. We then look through these downloaded images and if there's a match between one of them and the face track in the scene, then we label the face track accordingly like this. So using this method, we were able to label 20,000 face tracks with over 685 different people in the uh, subset of the data set that we used. So I'll now pass on to Ernesto uh, to give an overview of the software we developed for showing these annotations. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, yeah, indeed, we created a software prototype, a web search engine, to show what we can do with our results. So here, yeah, so basically, here we have uh, the main web page with the search bar. You can just click on the search bar, and then you get the list of all the people that we detected. And you can start typing and filtering uh, the name of the person that you're looking for. In this case, we select Hugh Grant, and then you instantly get uh, these results. So each of those thumbnails there represents a face track. So it represents a section of video. And if we click on the tier result, for instance, then we get more details about the video, and we can actually play the video for up to one minute. We highlight the face of the person that you were looking for, but also if there is more people in the video that we were able to identify as well, we also highlight those people. This is another, another um, example. In this case, we search for a BBC anchor, and she shows up in a lot of episodes, of course. So in this case, for this particular case, it's very useful to display the, the results organized by episode. So you can just group them by episode and show them uh, uh, the time stamps of the, uh, of the occurrences inside the video. Finally, we also support compound queries. So basically, compound query is where you can search for more than one person at the same time. So for instance, if we repeat the search of Hugh Grant, and then we click again on the search bar, uh, the results are automatically filtered to show you only the people that it shows up with Hugh Grant at the same time in the videos. So if we pick, for instance, Shirley Williams, then we filter the results that we had before just to show uh, to those that are in which they appear together in the videos. Um, well, uh, once again, thank you very much uh, for the award, and thank you much for inviting us. Thank you very much. Um, all right, okay, now the, the big moment, the, uh, the winner of, uh, of this year's um, British Library Labs Research Award. Here we go, the winner is uh, F-Tempo, full text search of early music print online by Tim Crawford. And uh, whilst we wait for, for Tim to come to the stage, just to say we thought this work was, was really groundbreaking in terms of making these, these fantastic collections more available to researchers, which is really what these uh, competitions are all about. So thank you very much, Tim. Okay, no more ado.
This is the kind of uh, material that this uh, project is concerned with, printed music. Um, those of you who know anything about uh, actual technicalities of printing will know that this music is typeset, it's not engraved. Uh, that's quite an important uh, feature of this material for us because that enables us to do optical character recognition. Um, there was a, a project um, funded by JISC um, as a rapid digitization project in 2011 and 300 anthologies uh, of music uh, by various composers um, uh, from the 16th century were um, uh, digitized. Uh, most of these are vocal part books, like that one you've just seen, and uh, it also includes lute tablatures and things, but we're not concerned with those uh, in this particular um, project. Um, uh, Laurent Pougin and I, uh, many, uh, several years ago now, uh, concluded that about something just over 200 of these could be digitized. In fact, in our collection, initially, for the initial experiments, we only had about 199. Um, anyway, we were able to do uh, uh, full-text music, music similarity search. Um, so in order to do this, you have to have uh, a way of getting the music from those images uh, into the computer. And uh, there, are there are two basic ways of doing this. One is you manually encode everything. As you can imagine, that's an enormously time-consuming business. Um, and it, of course, requires expertise. You need to know how to interpret these um, really sometimes quite uh, difficult uh, uh, forms of notation. Uh, and, uh, of course, humans get tired, so they make mistakes um, incrementally as the, week, as the day and the week uh, progress. So you expect on a Friday they wouldn't be doing as well as they do fresh on a Monday morning. Um, and, of course, it can't be done out of office hours, if you think about it. Um, optical music recognition, on the other hand, is, is reasonably fast and getting faster, and it can be run over huge collections. Um, however, uh, you, we have to recognise that optical music recognition is an extremely hard problem. Um, and in principle, it demands in advanced artificial intelligence. The reason for this is that you can't just... Um, do it on a character-by-character -character basis, rather like you can assemble words from um, re recognised characters in text. Uh, it's more complex than that. There's a lot of contextual information that has to be taken into account. In other words, what I'm saying is all music notation needs to be interpreted, not just recognised. Um, it's, it's slowly improving, but all optical music recognition uh, we have to accept produces errors. So we are forced to use noisy data, just like Google does in uh, Google Books, for instance. We can reduce, reduce the effects of this by carefully choosing, choosing features which we extract from the recognized music. Most of these errors concern the actual duration of the notes and their pitch, those obvious things. Those are the two main constituents of, of what people would understand by musical notes. Um, for the time being, we just ignore durations. I could, anybody wants to talk to me about that, I can tell you why later on. Uh, but we use diatonic pitch intervals. Don't worry too much about what that means. Basically, this refers to the shift in position between adjacent notes on the staff lines, as it were, the contour within a, star, a line of music. Uh, I mean, the physical contour. And um, we use sophisticated data structures which allow um, high-speed search of large numbers of items. Um, OK, we, uh, I got a small grant from the British Academy to work on this recently. And um, from the 600 pages that were mentioned in the very kind introduction just now, um, it's actually uh, gone from 60,000 pages. We are currently just about to ingest six, um, uh, sorry, 600,000 pages from the Munich uh, collection, which is uh, analogous to the British Library's one, but even bigger. And they've got larger um, digitised resources than the British Library does have in this field at the moment. But anyway, our 60,000 pages correspond to roughly 6 million notes, so there's quite a lot of data in there. Uh, and also, we want to add proper metadata support. At the moment, it doesn't have it. Um, uh, we, we literally are, are comparing pages. In other words, we're finding similar music content. 
And of course, we want to um, provide robust installation so that anybody anywhere in the world can use it. Uh, so we hope to approach mil uh, a million pages um, within a within a fairly short time. I, I, I must admit, as a, as a side point, I was quite surprised at the amount of printed music there was in the 16th century. If you think about it, a million pages, that's an awful lot of heaving on um, printing presses. Um, it, it's really a huge amount of industry um, with what we would think of nowadays as rather primitive tools. Okay, um, for those who are interested, there's an online demo, which I don't think there's time for me to, to show you now, but um, it's a very, very simple URL, HTTP, you don't even have to put that in. If you just type f-tempo.org, you will find your way to uh, a description of the project and a demo link. Okay, thank you.